Today on Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat, the experts at Rocky Point Boat Works finalize and splash the Twin V project. We've done a lot of upgrades to the boat and uh, we're getting excited getting this thing ready to go in the water. George Labonte joins Michael Lashbrook aboard his classic 23-foot sea craft. The completion of this project not only provided Michael with the means to enjoy all the activities that South Florida waters have to offer, it also allowed him to continue the legacy in boating that started in his family two generations ago. And the 20-foot sea craft project receives brand new power at TRB. I expect it to be an animal. It should be able to pop the boat up and the boat should be able to rip. While Dave at Rocky Point Designs builds and delivers the one-off dash panel. It's, it's like our two visions just came together, man. I mean, this thing is just over the top. I don't have words to really describe it. All coming up on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as we follow one-off builds to all-out restorations in Stewart, Florida's Dreamboat District, home to some of the best custom boat builders in the world. From modest to over the top, industry experts from the district's premier facilities show how it's done. Fiberglass repair, custom paintwork, engine rigging, electronics installations, and more. And boating editor George Labonte shares the stories of boaters who have already turned their dreams into reality. This is Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. So here at Rocky Point Boatworks, we're finishing up our 19-foot Twin V project. We've done a lot of upgrades to the boat, and uh, we're getting excited getting this thing ready to go in the water. So one of the things the customer uh, asked me to have done was sea deck put down. So we called up Open Water Concepts. They came out, laid that thing out real quick and easy. I think this was a good choice going this way. We were able to save some time and money because if we had to put non-skid on there, there's a lot of taping off, a lot of prep work. So this was just an easy way, instant gratification. Get it done in one day, no problem. All right, so we're doing this whole project too for the owner's wife. And uh, we thought it'd be a nice little surprise to name the boat after her. So I put a phone call into Pippa over at Sign Jungle to come over and put some custom decals on this boat. We picked a really nice font out, keeping the letters and the FL numbers nice and simple and clean. It's really kind of going with the flow of the boat. Sometimes less is more. So we got the boat hooked up to the truck. We're ready to go to the ramp. It's been a long time coming, and I'm really excited to see how all these little features and gadgets we put on the boat are going to operate, function, and hopefully we have no issues. And that's another reason why we do sea trial before we give the boat to the owner. Okay, the boat's off the trailer, in the water, and we're ready to break in the motor. Now, this procedure, you normally have to pay for. Well, you probably did, because you bought the motor. And this comes with your motor. If you look inside, it clearly tells you how to break in your motor properly. So we went ahead and we followed the break in procedure according to Yamaha. For your first hour of operation, you want to run the engine at varying speeds up to 2,000 RPM for the first hour. So for the second hour of operation, you want to get the boat up on plane and then back it off just enough to keep the boat on plane. Then you'll be varying your RPM up and down for the next hour. So for the remaining eight hours of the break-in, you can go ahead and run the motor as normal, varying the speeds up as long as you don't keep it at a wide open throttle for an extended period of time. And then after that 10 hours, you're good to go. So now we got the motor all broke in and uh, we're gonna go ahead and test out our RPM limits and speed and all that kind of stuff and see how the boat handles. I felt that it gave us plenty of hole shot, man. It had a, a pretty solid hole shot. It was really quiet, so uh, if you're out there cruising around, um, you'll be able to have a conversation on the boat. It just had a good smooth RPM band. I didn't feel anything odd. It, just, it was just real smooth, nice operation, easy in and out of gear. I expected that though, so Yamaha's pretty good. So I've installed a lot of trolling motors over here, but I really don't ever get to go out and play with them. A lot of them, you know, I, I put them on, the customer takes the boat, and that's it. Um, this one, we happen to put it on, and so while we're out there, we probably should have brought a fishing pole with us because this trolling motor was awesome. The spot lock on that thing is amazing. I want one for my boat now. <laughs> so when we first got the boat, it was partially disassembled, and uh, the things that were on the boat were in pretty poor condition. One of the things, the windshield was pretty crazed and looking it, it showed some time, so that was not a big deal. So we went ahead and did that, made sure our lines look good. Um, we also installed some nice new acrylic on the, on the boat, and I chose not to uh, show any mounting screws on the dash. We did all back mount, 
gives it a nice clean look. Uh, same thing, there was an old canvas cover to cover the fuel tank. So I went ahead and made a nice fold out lift out door and then back mounted that as well so you don't see any mounting hardware. Um, there was an old black hatch in the back that was covering the live well. Went ahead and made a nice custom um, live well cover for it. Again, back mounted all the screws. We installed all new wiring in the boat, uh, new trolling motor, new motor, um, new electronics. And we applied some paint to the boat, which I gotta say was probably uh, one of my favorite parts of the boat because I'm not a painter. For $100 in a long weekend, you can really turn your boat around and make it look awesome. I'm hoping that I improved on some things for the boat because the owner's wife likes to take the dog out, go to the sandbar, and enjoy our uh, beautiful area around here in Stewart, Florida. It just helps her out at the end of the day to, to, to unwind and just enjoy, you know, with no hassles. So I'm pretty sure I nailed it and uh, hope they enjoy it. When we come back, George Labonte joins dreamboat owner Michael Lashbrook aboard his classic 23-foot sea craft in this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment. This segment brought to you by Bird's All Marine Design. Quality marine accessories built to stand the test of time. Bird's All Marine Design has been a leader in aftermarket and custom boating accessories for over 35 years. Based in West Palm Beach, our facility specializes in the manufacturing of custom T-tops, leaning posts, consoles, rod holders, marine canvas and upholstery products, and a wide variety of anodized aluminum hardware. Come visit our spacious West Palm Beach facility anytime or visit us on the web at birdsallmarine.com to learn more about our most innovative products. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Project Dreamboat. Join us for this week's One Man's Dreamboat segment with Florida Sportsman Boating Editor George Labonte as we feature anglers who have already launched their dream. Florida Sportsman began these features 30 years ago and the dreams just keep getting better. Much like other brands we see repeatedly in our search for one man's projects such as Mako or Aquasport boats, today's story involves a brand that is among one of the most popular resto mod hulls we find. The 70s and 80s vintage hulls from this builder, especially the Potter built versions, remain highly sought after. Join us today in Boca Raton, Florida where we caught up with Michael Lashbrook and he shared with us some details about his classic 1971 Seacraft 23 project. I grew up boating down in the Keys uh, with my family. We grew up with several different boats, uh, 20 foot Dusky, uh, pontoon boat, jet skis. So we had them all growing up and never really had a boat that could perform like I really wanted to. And my fishing buddy, Phil, um, I had asked him a question, you know, hey, if you could have any boat, what would it be? And uh, his first response was a 23 Seacraft. So immediately started doing my research and called one of my buddies I knew had an 18 Seacraft before I'd never ridden on one. I had no idea what they were. I jumped on his boat and fell in love. With a newfound appreciation for both the ride and the look of these classic hulls, Michael soon found himself in search of one to call his own. Ended up finding one down in Fort Lauderdale. I showed up to the marina and it was in rough shape. Um, no engine on the boat. The deck was half up. Thank God, you know, at least there was a brand new fuel tank. So I, I was excited about that. We started ripping up the decks. We thought the stringers were gonna be in better shape. We thought the hole was gonna be in better shape. The whole boat needed to be completely restored. I decided to interview a few different boat builders um, in Pompano Beach, Fort Lauderdale area, because I'm from down here. And we, had, we ended up choosing a St. James Boat Works. When we ripped up the deck, uh, we realized that the stringers were in decent shape. Uh, so we took the original foam out and put new foam, and we actually extended the stringers to the, to the transom of the boat. We ended up closing the transom completely. Uh, we used all the, the CUSA board, so no wood. We didn't want to deal with any rotting at all. From extending the stringers to the, to the back, we ended up raising the deck a few inches to make sure that our deck was above the water line. We wouldn't deal with any issues uh, with wet feet or the boat sinking. So we decided to go with a, a flat deck. We didn't want that raised forward deck as most of the sea crafts had. Um, we do a lot of fishing in the bow, as well as go to the sandbar and hang out with our friends and family. Um, that's why we decided to do the, the flat deck from, from there. So we ended up getting a, um, a console from Competition Boat Works down in Miami. It's, it's a very slim console, newer look, sportier look, as well as the T-top from Competition Boat Works. Moving that console forward, gave us the ability to work with Birdsall to get a rocket launcher um, as well as some more fishing room uh, in the back. 
The, the front of the boat, we really wanted, uh, we wanted the best of both worlds, right? We want a boat that can go out hardcore fishing, but we also needed a boat that could take the family out, take our friends out to the sandbar. So we decided to get this removable forward seating, and it goes right along the bow. And um, again, it takes about 10 minutes just to remove and put them back on. We could safely put four to five people up on the bow and two sitting on the cooler. So there's a lot of room up on the bow for seating. When we closed the transom, we knew we had to get a bracket. Uh, we went with a double flotation bracket just so we get some more buoyancy in the back. And we went with a brand new 2020 uh, 300 Suzuki. I know these boats originally came with 235 power. We wanted more speed, more torque, and get on plane faster. And that's what we get out of this motor. It's, it's the best decision we made yet on the boat. With the bracket that we installed on the stern of the boat, everyone really enjoys getting in and out of the water, hanging out, sitting on there at the sandbar. It really is not just a, a, a bracket for the boat, it's far more than, than just floating the motor. Our typical use for the boat is, is doing some offshore fishing, usually in the morning when it's calm. We'll head back in, pick up the girls and family, and head to the sandbar, um, do some scuba diving, we do some snorkeling. But really we chose, th this boat really has it all, right? We could, it has the ability to go offshore, and with the seating and the comfort of, of just hanging out, we go to the sandbar. The completion of this project not only provided Michael with the means to enjoy all the activities that South Florida waters have to offer with his friends and family, it also allowed him to continue the legacy in boating that started in his family two generations ago. This build really meant a lot to me. My grandfather got us originally on the water, spent a lot of time with him and my dad, and uh, this, this boat project in all really meant a lot for my father and I. Uh, we bonded you know, every week going to the shop, telling him what we want, what we don't want. And really we get to spend a lot of quality time with our friends and family and, and just my dad and I fishing. So it's, it's really been a great project for the both of us. After an initial investment of $2,500 and spending $82,000 on repairs and custom modifications, the cost of Michael's dream boat comes to a total of $84,500. When we return, the professionals at TRB rig brand new power on the 20-foot Seacraft restoration. This segment brought to you by Two Rivers Boatworks. Exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. Dreaming of transforming your boat into the envy of the fleet? The experts at Two Rivers Boatworks are dedicated to customizing your boat to your specific needs and personality. Specializing in fiberglass and composites repair, professional painting, systems installation, and more. Founded by boating enthusiasts, we understand the enjoyment of being on the water, offering exceptional design, craftsmanship, and quality, so you can spend more time on the water than dreaming about it. Visit our facility in Stewart, Florida, and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as the experts at Birdsall Marine complete custom fabrication on the 20-foot Seacraft restoration before delivery to TRB for brand new power. Well, I'm happy that uh, Chris and his father are here to pick up the 20 Seacraft today. We did a, just a multitude of work on it. Uh, here at Birdsalls, we do fabrication, custom fabrication. We do canvas, upholstery, wiring. So we were able to help them with a little bit of everything here. One of the main concerns was they had an existing T-top and the legs rolled into the console, which is a nice way to, to fabricate. Um, but they were concerned about possibly the console getting overworked, uh, you know, and getting fatigued. So what we did was we, we designed a set of internal console bracing inside, engineered that and fabricated that. It came out really good. Uh, so the thing's going to be super strong for them. They had an existing control box. It's a stand on the console uh, tower, they call it. So we, we fabricated the control tubes for all the rigging to go through. Uh, we added some spreader lights. There was an LED tube light that we put on, a VHF antennas. We ended up lacing the canvas on and putting all the components on the top for them, putting the top on the boat. The thing came out really good. I think they're going to be real happy with everything. So over at Two Rivers Boat Works, one of the producers of the Project Dream Boat show um, started telling me about this little sea craft that he was building. Well, this boat arrived here one Saturday morning for us to hang the motor on it. 
and Chris and his dad have knocked it out of the park. This boat is beautiful. There's a ton of attention to detail. They did a really fantastic job. And their passion for the boating industry and boating and fishing and being on the water is definitely very evident in this project. So today in the shop today, we got the 20 foot Seacraft um, coming in for the new 200 V8 uh, Pro XS. So previously we did a 20 foot Seacraft with a 150 on it, four cylinder. Um, the customer was happy with it, but it just wasn't enough for me for this boat. That boat didn't have a T-top. You know, it was missing a few things that, that this boat obviously has. So when we were looking at it, we figured a V8 platform would be the best thing for this boat. Being that the boat was completely retrofitted, has a bracket now and everything like that, you know, with my performance background, we used to always check, you know, run a straight edge across the bottom of the boat and just for engine height and knowing that Mercury's like to run a little bit higher than the other, you know, outboards out there, we, we chose to mount the engine height where we mounted it. Um, there's always that chance you may have to go back, lower a hole, raise a hole, um, but I've repowered a lot of boats and you know, that's why I'm here at Two Rivers. We chose to go with the American flag decals on this boat, to set it aside from every other Pro XS out there or any other motor out there. You basically, you can tape, put a piece of tape on the cowlings where the old ones were and you can mark everything. You peel the decals off, clean the glue off, and then just install the new ones right back on. It's a couple hour job and you can be done. So looking at the project finally coming together, I know Chris and his dad are itching to get on the water. We love it. We can't wait to get the boat on the water, see how it floats, see how it looks, see how it runs. When we return, Rocky Point Boatworks gets to designing and fabricating the custom dash panel for the 20-foot Seacraft project. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all new Yamaha V8 XTO offshore. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. Join us as the experts at Rocky Point Boatworks fabricate a custom flush mount dash panel for the 20-foot Seacraft project. So here at Rocky Point Boatworks, we're working on this tricked out 20-foot Seacraft. The owner, Chris, and I had talked about this panel and he wants to go over to the top. So we went ahead and make our template and we're back at the shop and we're gonna go ahead and start this long fabrication process. A lot of you out there are probably going to these boat shows and realizing all these boats are having flush mounted electronics, making it look like a seamless piece of uh, black plexi or glass, so to speak. It looks real modern, sleek, it's a good look. So we're gonna take you through a couple steps on how to do that. So we're using half inch black acrylic to do this project. We draw our template out on the piece we cut out of the acrylic. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and put some guides on there and use our router table. The customer has a 12 inch Simrad and after talking about location of it on the panel, we went ahead and started mapping out where we're going to put it. It's crucial to have the unit when you're doing this type of installation because we want the smallest gap possible to make this unit look seamless in the, in the acrylic. Once that's determined, we went ahead and uh, drew out our uh, cutout. We popped a couple holes in each corner. We're going to use the jigsaw, cut that piece out, and then move on from there. Now that we got our uh, piece roughed out with a jigsaw, we're moving on to the router. This is very crucial at this point because our gap between the unit and the acrylic has got to be dead on. We're talking thousandths of an inch. To make my hole straight and square, I use pieces of acrylic that I have uh, machined out and I go ahead and use a double-sided tape to adhere them to the material. So once I got a little picture frame made out of my acrylic strips and everything's looking square, I'm going to go ahead and set my router bearing bit height and go ahead and router this thing out. Now we gotta get our mounting depth so that the glass of the unit is even with our acrylic. Doing this, we're gonna use a rabbit bit. I strongly suggest using a test piece at this point to determine the depth because there is a mounting flange, you got your glass, and then there's a mounting flange. 
that normally has a trim bezel that goes around it. In this case, we're not using the bezel. We're mounting from the back. So we're talking an eighth inch, maybe a little less. So we gotta be real crucial on what we take out. We don't wanna take too much out. We don't wanna take too little out. Test piece, test piece, test piece. Then we move on to our uh, piece that we're gonna install on the boat later. When you're taking out all this material from the back side of the, the uh, piece of acrylic, I don't recommend taking a whole lot out. Being that we're doing such a, a fine line, we don't wanna risk cracking this panel at this point. It would be, it would just be terrible. So take your time, take a little material out at a time to get to your goal of uh, the proper depth. Once everything's routed out and we're happy, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the Simrad unit, pop it in there and make sure that our fitment is good and the depth is correct. I was really happy with the fitment, so we're gonna move on from here. Part of this layout that we have determined is the stereo and the trim tab switch, and he wants it back mounted. Well, these items aren't normally back mounted, so I gotta make templates in order to get my cutout correctly to set it up for the back mount. I use the bezel from the radio in order to make my template because the bezel fits around the unit pretty snug and tight, and that's kinda how I'm envisioning this thing being flush mounted. I was making a template for the radio um, there's a little extra material on there, so I went ahead and I used the uh, trim tab. Now this doesn't have a mounting bezel, so I had to do a rough trace, do a couple measurements, and I had a hand router this to make it look right. Lucky for me, I nailed it on the first attempt. So now we're moving on to the switch panel, and now that I have the laser, it enables me to do a lot of other things. This panel, we're backlighting. So we're using some engraving stock and we're doing everything from the back side so that you can put some LED lights back there, um, RGB lighting, change the colors, and it makes it look totally trick at night. And just looks awesome at the dock, man, if you wanna show off to friends. So after everything's all done, final fit, the laser engraving's done, everything's looking good, I'm gonna go ahead and load this up in the truck and bring it on over to Randy and Chris, and I'm praying that they're super happy with what I built for them. As I walk up to the boat with my panel, I realize these guys have been busting their humps. Two Rivers Boat Works has got the motor hung and this boat's looking ready to run. They're waiting on me. So I'm excited to put my piece of the puzzle onto this boat so we can move on from there. Once I slid this panel in place, Randy's gotta be excited, man. I mean, the hard work he's put in, him and Chris, um, it just, it's, it's like our two visions just came together, man. I mean, this thing is just over the top. I, I don't have words to really describe it. I got a lot of hours in this dash, and uh, at this point, it's a very happy moment for me because I get to wave goodbye. Super happy that this part of the project is over. Next week on Florida Sportsman, Project Dreamboat. The experts at TRB fully customized Dale's Century Project, then put it to the ultimate angling test, and we join the owners of the classic 20-foot sea craft for their maiden fishing excursion.